Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa afdalu salat wa atamu taslim على سيدنا ونبينا محمد النبي المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله In our Quran circle we are beginning بإذن الله تعالى a new series on understanding the divine command and this is covering something that frequently is neglected which is one of the genres of tafsir one of the sub specializations of tafsir which is either which is classically referred to as tafsiru ayat al ahkam tafsir of the verses of the quran that contain legal rulings it's also referred to as at tafsir al-fiqhi the legal tafsir of the quran right and the role of tafsir of interpretation of the quran is to bring out and uncover the guidance of the quran right and to appreciate its meanings and beauty and what it is called what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling his servants to that divine call has different aspects because the quran which is a book of guidance as the beginning of surah al-baqarah tells us one of the aspects of the guidance is the specific commands of the quran of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran So what we're going to be looking at is some of the key sets of verses in the Quran that talk about the divine command with respect to key aspects of our of our lives not only to understand the legal rulings related to it but to appreciate the beauty and the richness of this divine command one of the very notable scholars of our times um one of the elder statesman statesman of islamic scholarship sheikh nuruddin itr of halab of aleppo uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him in health and grant him a long uh, even longer life in his work on the sciences of the quran he talks about this category of tafsir the tafsir of legal rulings and uh, he calls it at tafsir al fiqhi the, the legal tafsir of the quran said so this category of tafsir of explanation of the quran focuses on the v- verses that have legal rulings and shows how to how rulings of the religion are deduced from it one of the distinguishing characteristics of this type of tafsir is the preciseness of understanding in these verses because they they derive so many meanings from the verse right because these verses relate directly to human action one example and i'd encourage you if you when you're listening go back home and try to make a list of how many rulings you can derive there's one verse in the quran that talks about purification that's one of the verses we'll be looking at it's in the fifth surah of the quran verse number 6 surah al-maida verse number 6 the fifth surah of the quran verse number 6 just a mid-sized verse of the quran one verse all the rulings related to the principles of purification the rulings of wudu the rulings of ghusl the rulings of tayammum the rulings if you have excuse the legal wisdom behind the rulings of purification and more are all found in this one verse some of the scholars said that this one verse has more than 400 rulings Others said there's more than 600 rulings that are mentioned 
explicitly or by indication from this verse. And it's not just the rulings, but the wisdom and many, many subtleties. And we'll try to appreciate through this, not just what Allah is commanding us to do, also to appreciate the inimitable eloquence and beauty of the Qur'an. For example, in this verse of purification, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the acts of wudu in a certain way. And we'll be coming to it, but just to give a little touch. There's a certain way that wiping the head and washing the feet is mentioned in the verse. From the, 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 the way this is expressed, one of the great commentators on the Qur'an, Imam al-Zamakhshari said, rhetorically, what's understood from the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects washing the, wiping the head and washing the feet, the way it's expressed, indicates that wash your feet but do so lightly and don't waste water. Just as you only use a little bit of water to wipe your head. Because where do one of the places where people waste the most water is when washing their feet. That's subtle, but it's clearly understood by a careful reading with understanding of the Qur'an. And we'll see many, many other rulings that are understood. Um, and the beginning of this type of tafsir is from the Prophet ﷺ himself. Because the Prophet ﷺ explained to the Sahaba men specifically many of the verses of the Qur'an, right? And he clarified them explicitly and through his example. And the Sahaba, as things happened, they went back as the Prophet ﷺ taught them to the Qur'an and found meanings of guidance in it to be guided by. Um, and many rulings that arose the Sahaba differed upon how they understood the text of the Qur'an based on the principles of interpretation. And we'll, we'll see examples of that. Um, and there's a wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed the rulings and guidance of the Qur'an in way, the way he did. There are general principles of the religion that are only open to one interpretation. Because we have one Lord and one guidance in his general principles. But in the details, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the early verses of Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, that there are verses that are open to more, one, more than one meaning. And one of the wisdoms in that is, it serves as mercy to creation, that there's more than one way things can be understood. And this diversity is from the beauty of our religion. And this process of understanding meanings from the guidance of the Qur'an, lasted through till the age of the imams of ijtihad, such as the four imams and others. Right? And the fuqaha compiled the legal rulings in the works of fiqh. But then the ulama came and said that, okay, let's do specific detailed tafsir related to the verses on legal rulings on their own. Because where is the fiqh of the Qur'an found? In the books of tafsir, of uh, the books of fiqh, right? The rulings of prayer. What, what, what's their root? Is the divine command in the Qur'an. But we find, if you go to the book, books of fiqh, how you pray, etc., the roots of this are in the Qur'an. So the fuqaha, went to the Qur'an, went to the sunnah, they derived the rulings, they put them in the books of fiqh. But then, the ulama said, it, it would be very beneficial as well to co compile works of tafsir, dedicated works of tafsir that focus on showing how the fuqaha, how the scholars of fiqh, derived rulings from the Qur'an. And... There, there are many, many works in this genre. But we will look at two principal works. 
One of these is a great Imam of the Hanafi school. Um, and he was at the level of Ijtihad in the Hanafi school. He is famous, at, he was the leading scholar of Iraq of his time. Right? Ab Imam Abu Bakr, Ahmad ibn Ali al Razi, and he is famous as Al Jassas. Right? Al Jassas. So he's famous, I mean, Imam Abu Bakr, Ahmad ibn Ali al Razi, and he's also famous as Imam Al Jassas. And Al Jassas comes from Jis, which is plaster, you know, white plaster, which you plaster the wall with and so on. Um, because many of the scholars who were in Iraq at that time, this was the center of the Islamic Caliphate. They didn't want positions of power as the, to be the Qadi or the Mufti. So they gave themselves very humble family names. The potter, the plasterer, the shoe repairs person. Why? They say, oh, it's just some regular guy. Because they, they wanted to focus on knowledge rather than having big positions. Imam al-Jassas was born in the, th the year 305 after the Hijrah. And died in the year 370. And he studied with great giants of Islamic scholarship. Amongst them, Imam Abu al-Hasan al-Karkhi and many others. And he had great attention to hadith and wrote great, great works of fiqh. But one of his very distinguished works is his Tafsir Ayat al-Ahkam, one of the early comprehensive works on this subject. Before him, Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi, whose Aqidah many people are familiar with, the creed of Imam al-Tahawi, but who's most famous as a great Imam of Hadith, he also wrote uh, a tafsir of the verses of legal rulings. And others did as well as dedicated works. We have a part of Imam Tahawi's uh, tafsir. And similar works were compiled by um, some great Shafi'is, um, Qadi Abu Bakr, Ibn al-Arabi, al-Maliki, the Maliki jurist, who's also a student of Imam Ghazalis, in the early 6th century, he wrote a very distinguished tafsir, also of the ayat of Ahkam. And then there's a work that's become very famous, that, and th these are the two principles work we'll, works we'll, we'll be looking at, the work of Imam Abu Bakr al-Jassas, who died in the year 380, and Imam Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi's tafsir. Imam Al-Qurtubi, his tafsir, which is called Al-Jami' li Ahkam Al-Qur'an. Imam Al-Qurtubi, um, whose full name is Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ahmad, Al-Ansari, Al-Andalusi, Al-Qurtubi, um, he was originally he was born in Qurtuba, in the modern day city of uh, Cordoba. And that's where he acquired his knowledge. But then he migrated east. Um, and he resided um, north. Uh, he resided in a small town north of Asyut, where Imam Siyuti is originally from. Came several centuries later. Um, and his tafsir, which is one of the large tafsirs of the Quran, he wrote it very clearly and he called it Al Jami' li Ahkam al Quran, the compendium of the rulings of the Quran. He pays attention to the legal verses, but he focuses on the Ahkam, the rulings, the meanings that are understood from each verse. So though a comprehensive tafsir and deep and rich and nuanced, but on each set of verses he says, we understand this many issues from the verse. 
So it's not only a legal tafsir. It's one of the great, great tafsir of Islam. But he also pays attention to the legal rulings that are understood. So Imam Abu Bakr al-Jassas' tafsir, Ayat al-Ahkam, is probably the most important legal tafsir written. And he goes very deep into the process of legal interpretation. Because he himself was at the level of ijtihad. Um, and, but it's a technical tafsir. We'll be taking you know, examples of the depth of understanding of the ulama, how they understood from the Qur'an. Um, and Imam Al-Qurtubi, one of the things that he, he does, he brings out a lot of other meanings beyond the legal from the verses. So it's a, they're very complementary. Um, Imam Al-Qurtubi is also known for his righteousness and his great, and you know, he's described in, this, in the books of biography, he's one of the ulama who is busy with the matters of the hereafter. Right? Um, and Allah placed barakah in, in, his, in, his, in his books. Um, and Imam Al-Qurtubi died in the year 671 after the Hijrah. So, these are the two main tafsirs that, that we're going to look at. And our goal from this is we'll begin with some of the commands in Surah Al-Baqarah and then go through the Qur'an over the, over the summer to, to touch upon some of the, the critical verses that touch upon a range of aspects related to our worship, related to our social dealings, related to the halal and haram and other things to understand both the rules related to it, how the ulama deduced rulings from it, how they differed based on what is being indicated in the Qur'an, but also how they understood the wisdom of the, of the divine command and to appreciate something of the rhetorical beauty of these verses. Um, And the purpose of, of these, this class is to, to deepen our understanding of divine guidance on particular matters related to our worship, our social relations, our dealings, the halal and haram, but also to increase in deeper understanding of divine revelation in the, the divine command, but how Allah in His wisdom and mercy made the divine command open to sometimes a range of interpretations as mercy for us and as expansiveness. But also how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always con co connects the commands of the Qur'an to spiritual Wisdom. Kutiba alaykum siyam. Fasting has been prescribed to you. Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. As was prescribed to those before you. Why? Just because? No. La'allakum tattaqoon. So that you may acquire taqwa. So there's a divine command and it's explained. But the, the purpose of fasting is also explained. Right? The benefits are explained. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wishes ease for you. لِتَشْكُرُوا اللَّهُ In order that you may be grateful to Allah. Okay. He gives us guiding principles in, in our life. كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا Eat and drink, but do not be wasteful. So he says, eat and drink, it's permissible for you to partake in food and drink within the limits of Allah, but do not be wasteful. Why? Because he doesn't love the wasteful. Okay? Rather, partake in the things of this life in a manner beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So there's layers and layers of meaning in it. Eat and drink. But do not be wasteful. From that, numerous rulings are understood. That in anything, partake of it with restraint. Wastefulness is not pleasing to Allah. So if you want the pleasure of Allah, have restraint. I don't follow your whim. Because that's one. Many, many meanings are understood from that. Um, so our goal is to appreciate the depth and beauty of the Qur'an, but also to appreciate the wisdom behind divine guidance and the spiritual dimensions related to these rulings, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And we'll be taking as our foundational source, because there's many, many works of this type of tafsir, the tafsir of the legal rulings, the two fundamental works that we'll be looking, looking at frequently would be Imam Abu Bakr al-Jassas' work, Ahkam uh, al-Qur'an, and we're taking from it because it's a technical work. And number two, Imam al-Qurtubi's much more expansive work, Al-Jami'a uh, Ahkam al-Qur'an, famous as Tafsir al-Qurtubi, we'll be relying on a number of other tafsir as well, as context in, entails. Um, and Ta'ala will be updating the website with, with, the, with the description and the lesson breakdown so you'll know which, which verses we're covering in advance. Ta'ala. Um, so that's what we, we wanted to introduce the, the, uh, the topic today. Um, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for clarity and steadfastness and to make us of the people of the Quran who are the people of Allah and His most chosen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us to recite the Qur'an regularly, to make the Qur'an the life of our hearts, to make us of those who strive to recite it as it deserves to be recited, to memorize it and to review our memorization, who act upon its teachings, who live and strive to exemplify its guidance, who reflect upon it, and whose consciousness is transformed by it, so that we attain the stations of those who are true servants of the Lord of the Qur'an, right? Because how is one humbled right? when the Sultan of the Qur'an, right? the might of the Qur'an humbles one's heart. Has the time not come for those who have truly believed for their hearts to become humbled by the remembrance of Allah وَمَا جَاءَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And what has, what has come of truth, right? Or what has come from the most real, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not to be like those who, for whom their hopes grew long and whose hearts became hard and many of whom became corrupt. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to bring our hearts to life with the, with the life-giving water of the Qur'an, the way Allah gives life to the, the dead earth through water that comes down from the sky. And may he, he grant us the light of faith and certitude through our connection with the Qur'an. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sahib al-Qur'an Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama taslima سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وبارك الله تعالى فيكم. It's good to see you guys. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.